on this for me. Okay, hello. Um, we're in person with a lot of people I know and on Zoom with people I don't know at all. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, my name is uh, Ben Rivera. I study coastal dune plants. I'm a PhD student here at UC Davis. Uh, this is the UC Davis Stats Support Group, um, which is uh, just a, a group of graduate uh, students in ecology that uh, get together and, and share resources and, and try to get better at statistics together pretty informally. Uh, this week, as you all may or may not know, I'm giving a talk about how to use R to uh, do a web of science search and download all the papers and put it up on a Google Drive. Um, if you want to download that script for yourself, you can go to tinyurl.com slash meta dash R. That'll take you to my website where I have hosted uh, the, the code, but it also has this Google Drive link, which I've already sent to the chat, but I'll send again for good measure. Um, where you can download the R Markdown file uh, itself. Um, follow me on Twitter at not Ben Rivera. Um, yeah, that tweet I sent about this was I was expecting like three people here at Davis to be like, oh, I can't go. And then now over uh, 350 people have uh, liked it, which is pretty nuts. So I'm going to do my best to cater to the folks on Zoom and to the uh, folks in the room. And hopefully by the end of this, you can have your own Google Drive set up to do a meta analysis on something that you're interested in. Um, so while you're downloading the file, which I, who knows how long that's going to take, I just want to talk a little bit about my motivation. Um, so obviously, I study coastal dune plants, um, and they're the best. Um, but I was working on just a review and I got, uh, I got to feeling like, oh, I'm just finding the papers that I'm kind of haphazardly looking for and that I wanted something a little bit more systematic to back me up. Um, but I am also kind of lazy. So uh, I didn't want to go through the process of having to download all those papers just by and for myself. So instead I did something that has taken much more of my time <laughs> and I wrote uh, an entire script to uh, to essentially get me started um, and uh, this is the word cloud that I made based off of my initial search which is for dune plant uh, community assembly and um, eventually look for that publication in like months and months who knows um, okay so let's get started uh, the goal of this tool is to really help people initiate doing a meta-analysis. Um, it's not going to help much in terms of like doing the meta-analysis, but it's going to help you just be like set up. Um, I, I hope I can explain this well enough for y'all to be able to get started today and then maybe in the future modify in other cool ways. And uh, I, I hope that we can all have fun lists of uh, papers at the end of this. So I just want to briefly explain how it works before we get into the actual code and the details. Uh, essentially, what it does is uh, you select a search term and uh, R is able to communicate to Web of Science and their core collection. Um, and it, it searches through there just based off of keywords. Um, and then it'll download all that metadata. So it'll just what you'll get from that is just a list of papers. Then uh, you take that list and you can extract the uh, DOIs uh, and you use that to then use a couple other tools to download as many PDFs as it, as it can find on the internet readily available. Um, based on this, uh, based on these results, I also made word clouds just because I thought that was fun and uh, might be a little bit informative as to what words are popping up a lot in your search um, and what are associated with. Um, but then after that, uh, what we do is we um, take all those results, we zip all the PDFs into a zip file, and we upload it uh, straight up to uh, Google Drive, uh, along with a Google Sheet of all of the results from your uh, query of Web of Science. That way you can get started iterating paper by paper and extracting the information that you want to do, especially helpful if you're working with a team, because then you can just all work on the same document. 
Um, yeah, again, I strongly recommend uh, downloading the script for yourself from tinyurl.com slash meta dash R. Um, I think that'll be the most important thing, but I'll try to uh, kind of explain how the code works on its own. Uh, normally I make PowerPoints, but because uh, I already had an R markdown, I made a like an R markdown slidey presentation. So this is also new to me. I'm really, really going out of my comfort zone here. So, okay, let's talk about the most fun part, which is getting set up. Um, I use an array of pre-existing packages. Uh, I <laughs> didn't invent any of this myself, but just put it all together in a way that I thought would be helpful. And uh, apparently some other folks do too. Um, so most of the packages I use are just right off of CRAN, the big repository, so it can be very easily downloaded. Uh, and I have that in there at the first line, the install packages. Um, so just delete any ones you may already have, or you can update them. Uh, there are two really important ones that you have to install from GitHub. So there's SciHubber, which, spo oh, spoiler alert, we're going to be downloading from SciHub. So, um, which is, you know, a great place. Uh, and then our WOS, which stands for our web of science. Uh, those are the two important ones that you need to connect to those websites with. Um, but if you have remotes or uh, uh, dev tools, which are available on CRAN, uh, it's very, very easy to download these packages on your own. You just have to uncomment the single commented, sorry single commented items, and uh, then you should be good to go. Uh, let's see, we've got something in the chat. Uh, looks like there might be some difficulty installing Metagear. Uh, ooh, yeah, definitely keep helping each other with that. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe that, maybe I missed that one, and it's actually um, off of GitHub. That could have been a mistake on my part, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, okay. So the step one is the web of science search. Um, so uh, right now, this tool only uses keyword searches, uh, but you can in the future uh, set it up to do other types of searches, I believe. So you can like search by author, search by um, citation, I believe. Um, but I haven't gone through the process of doing that because I didn't really need to. Uh, an important aspect of this is that you have to be able to authenticate to uh, web of science. So everybody in this room with me right now, uh, you're going to be fine because you're on UC Davis Wi-Fi. And being on that Wi-Fi means you have institutional access to web of science. So essentially, it just means you have permission to do it. If you're at home, you can use, and at UC Davis, you can use the Davis VPN, uh, which essentially makes your computer act as if it's on UC Davis Wi-Fi, and it'll give you permission. I'm not sure. Uh, many institutions have access to Web of Science. It, it's a pretty classic uh, um, thing to buy for, for an institution, but I really don't know uh, what to do if, if you don't. I know you can get a personal uh, Web of Science account, um, and you can actually put in those credentials into uh, a line of the code. I'll show you where that is on the next slide, uh, and then um, and then you can use your, your personal account or a, a specific account instead. Um, and then the last part of this aspect is that I do a quick check because if you put in a term just like plants, you just search for plants, you're going to get like a million results and you probably don't want to download a million PDFs in one go onto your computer. Um, so I just do a little check to make sure I, I set it at 300. I don't know what the right amount of papers is. That's too many is, uh, but that's what we're going with. So here's the code for this part. Uh, and the, hopefully all you have to do once you get to this, uh, when, once you get to this point uh, in, uh, is just replace what you've written, what I've written in here, which for this demo, I use coastal doom nitrogen fixation. Uh, you just have to replace that with your own personal term, whatever you want. Um, so like I put in like uh, kelp forest regeneration and you know, I got eight results back when I did that last night. Uh, but you can put in anything there. So uh, that's what makes it really flexible uh, and, and really neat. Um, so this is that uh, point where uh, you have to authenticate to the Web of Science API and you have to say, hey, Web of Science, I exist. 
let me use your website from here. Um, so if you end up having your own credentials and not using an institutional Wi-Fi, being on institutional Wi-Fi or on the VPN, you'd put your credentials in here. Uh, this next aspect actually does the, the search itself. Um, so this right here, this TS, means that it's a term search. I believe that's what it's short for. Uh, you can replace that with other types of search. You can go on Web of Science, like the actual one, and play around with their different acronyms in the advanced search function um, and, and change that around. But that's not what I did here. Uh, so as you can see, for our search term, coastal dune nitrogen fixation, we got 25 results. That's a, that's a very easy amount of papers. Uh, but you do have to retrieve them, and that essentially just takes the search and puts it into a data frame. I don't really know how why they have it split up exactly like that, but they do. Uh, so just taking a look at the results of our search, you can see that uh, we get a bunch of different information with this. So uh, UID is just like a web of science specific indicator, like it's just like a number identifier. Um, then you get the title, the journal issue volume, essentially everything you would need to cite this paper. And almost more importantly is that you get the, the DOIs along with it. Um, yeah, this is, and then the last thing I do in this aspect is just say, hey, if it's over 300 papers, are you sure you want to actually receive and download all of them? Uh, just because I don't want anybody yelling at me if I crash their computer. Okay. Uh, once and you know, just looking around this this data set is already pretty interesting in and of itself. But it's basically the same as just going to Web of Science and and plugging things in. Uh, what makes this script useful is that we start stealing papers from side of, um, <laughs> and that's kind of the the special part about this that makes life a lot easier because uh, then you're not just messing around trying to figure out every publisher's weird system to get your PDFs from. Uh, instead, it's a lot easier. Um, so essentially, we're taking the DOIs from our search results, running them through a for loop, and downloading as many as we can. Um, I'm not actually sure if the VPN needs to be turned off at this point. It did when I was testing it a long time ago, but then when, like last night, it worked with it on. So who knows? Uh, so uh, we have roughly a 70 to 80% success rate on how many PDFs we're able to download. Um, which I, you know, is fine. Like that's, it's not perfect, but uh, yeah, I think that makes life easier. Um, and that's, so I'll show you the code here. So the first thing I do is I put in this function for just like, all this does is it catches an error. Uh, if it goes back, so when you put, when you try to download a paper and it can't find it, it spits out an error and then it will stop your code. All this try catch does is that it tries it out and if it doesn't work it still lets you continue on your code that, that, that's basically it um so here's the for loop it's just for as many publications as we found in our search uh, we extract the doi and here we extract the title and that's in order to make your uh, file name oh i forgot to say right here it just this just makes a a new uh, folder to put all your results in very easy so you can change the name of that if you want, but then you have to change it in other places. Um, so this is <laughs> this is my very um, really not great. I'm sure somebody who's better at coding would have a better uh, time coding this, but it's just a big if else statement. Uh, the if is if it try it'll try to download from SciHub first, and if that doesn't work, it actually tries this other method of PDF downloading. Uh, which is what bumped me up from like 50 to the 70 to 80 percent we see now. So um, I don't really know who made this or where it came from. Uh, I think that's from the Metagear uh, package, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Um, but it is, it's pretty helpful. So again, this essentially runs itself. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, is the downside just because it's trying to extract every single one, and um, that can be a little bit. It just sometimes takes a long time and you can see like here it just didn't work. Um, but then here when you get the citation, which for whatever reason goes straight into your clipboard. So if you download a paper and then hit paste, it'll you'll just have the citation already in there. I didn't ask it to do that, but it does. Um, 
So you can see that it downloads a lot, as many of these papers as it can, and it spits out a lot of words because it's just running through each and every one trying to communicate with you. Um, any questions so far? I still found with Metagear as well. You were having trouble with Metagear? Yeah. Yeah, that I might. I download like directly, not from the code. Yeah. My R Studio still not. It's work, but when I try to recall it, regularly, oh, really? it doesn't work. Maybe you need to restart your R or something. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. If anyone has had better luck with it, because <coughs> um, I'm really not sure. Yeah. Maybe can we go back to the like code for search uh, yeah. jump part? Like I'm not really familiar with the, this like the uh, argument like WS and authenticate and what specific argument should be uh, there? So that does you don't have to put anything in there. Okay. All it does is it so WS stands for Web of Science, uh -huh. and so this is just authenticating that you have permission to make a Web of Science search. Okay. So because you're on UC Davis Wi-Fi right now, you, it will, it'll be like, yep, it'll work. And then, so like, if you go home and don't have your VPN on, when you run that line, it'll, it'll get mad at you. Okay, it's fine. I'm not working at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good work-life balance. Anything else? Okay. Great. Let's move on. Uh, okay. So at the end, you should end up with a big folder full of uh, papers, full of PDFs. Some of them come back weird as just like this file that's empty and you can't open it. That's a little annoying. Uh, some of them you can get uh, to, where is it? Yeah, oh, some of them you will end up uh, showing up as duplicates. Uh, that can happen sometimes. Um, but again, it's, you know, 70 to 80% you get at least some kind of download on. So here's the fun part uh, that I just shamelessly stole from this link right here, uh, and it's how to make word clouds. Um, I thought it would be, I don't know, I just thought it might be kind of unique and, and useful. Um, I'm not going to go over the code for it too much, uh, just because I don't really actually know it that well. Uh, essentially, it just takes you, so here, all I do right here is take out the keywords from the document. And uh, what all of this does is just like removes the numbers and the punctuation and the, the words you don't actually want. It throws it into another, oop, throws it into another document, another, does some fancy stuff with it. And eventually you get something that looks like this. Ah, cool, word cloud. Um, and then if you use word cloud two, you are, so word cloud, just the base one, uh, you get a static image like this. Um, where it's just a nice looking uh, uh, image of, of weight and you know the size of the word correlates with the uh, frequency it showed up. Um, and there's a bunch of different things you can play around with, like the color palette uh, and the order and yada, yada, yada. Um, but then if you use Word Cloud 2, you actually get a dynamic tool. So if I scroll over nitrogen, you can see that it showed up 10 times in our keywords. Uh, where a succession showed up five times. So you actually get a numbers output of what words are showing up, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, then in the code, I did the same thing, but just with what shows up in the titles. Except for some reason, it didn't work on Word Cloud 2. I don't know why. I didn't think it was that important to fix, so I didn't. The final part is the hardest to actually show, uh, but it's also one of the easiest for y'all to run. And this is uploading things onto your Google Drive. All you have to do at this last section is uncomment the things that only have uh, one hashtag on them. So like this right here. And similar to what we were talking about with the web of science authentication. So Google Sheets, you have to authenticate your Google account to uh, and say like, hey, they're allowed to make changes. So when you run this line of code, um, it will actually, uh, your web browser will open up at this point and you have to sign into your Google account. And um, I signed into my UC Davis account because it operates as a Google account. Um, and you, you might have to do this twice. Uh, once when you, because you, here you zip your file full of um, full of your search results, and then you upload it to your drive. But this is uploading to Sheets. I don't, 
I don't know why I have to do it a different way. There's probably a better way, but this is how I did it and it worked. Um, so again, it's, uh, it's, it's actually very easy. You just have to sign into your Google account, um, but it's kind of hard to show. Uh, and won't this actually, the script won't knit uh, if you have this running, which is annoying. Um, so uh, I wasn't able to really show you exactly, uh, but eventually, so this is the output that I get. Um, and you can see that I'm using, I'm using this right now in a meta analysis. And I added just a bunch of uh, additional columns. Um, and then my, uh, me and my, my field tech are slowly uh, inputting the data here so that we can, um, we can eventually add it to the review I was talking about at the very beginning. I see we got some chats. Question for the work, uh, web of science search. How do you code Boolean values and the like in that search term? Um, so um, to do that, you, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, right now it only works with text for me. I haven't looked into adding anything like Boolean variables. Uh, I would just type it out. Um, I'm not sure you probably have to play around with it. Yeah, Ben, just as a follow up, like, do you think that this would work if you were saying, like, find me papers that include this term and this term? Oh, I see. I see, yeah. like an ampersand. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I think it would. I think you can use the same syntax that you would be able to, uh, that you would use, you know, like going on the website and using it there. So I think maybe you'd be able to use it like that. Uh, I haven't tried that. Uh, but I think with some finagling, um, that could work. Yeah, I asked because I assume for like a lot of a meta analyses, you get these like long, complicated mm -hmm. searches where you're like this or this and this or this. Like you can use like the asterisk for changing the endings. Like, right. do you know if any of that stuff works here? I haven't specifically tried it, but I'm pretty sure you would. It's I, like it essentially just plugs into Web of Science what you would use. So my um, my intuition says that if it was doesn't work just by like typing it straight out, uh, you could finagle it so that uh, cool. it would be able to work. And my field tech commented in that we're doing this very slowly, so that is true. Uh, uh, thank you, Alice, for for showing up. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, um, that's how. Oh, the works. I hope this was a useful exercise and that uh, y'all got something out of it and maybe uh, are thinking about using it to set up your own meta analyses. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see your word clouds at some point in the future. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or need some help uh, troubleshooting um, or even if you have any questions right now. Uh, follow me at Napin Rivera on Twitter or email me at then Rivera at ecdavis.edu. Um, yeah, please send me your word clouds. Uh, yeah. Any questions before we end? I just, I just one thing. Uh, I think uh, so this RWS doesn't uh, doesn't play nice with whatever art version of RStudio I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I just no, there is another crayon package that is W W O S R. Yeah, there is another crayon package. However, I've had difficult. I had a lot more difficulty with that one. R W O S is the one I was able to get to work. But there, if it doesn't work for you, there's another. There is another option. Yeah, it's it's like not a none of the functions are the same, so it might not. Yeah, you'd have yeah, to do some it's editing. It's not really working yet, but. Yeah, but once you get past the search aspect, I imagine the for loop would work. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll keep the Zoom going in case people are troubleshooting and have any questions as they're working through it. Uh, but thank you so much for coming. I hope you had a good time. Uh, tell your friends. And um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much.